in Timothy chapter 3. I want to finish this chapter with you this morning. You know, Paul, where we left off yesterday in verse 9, he, he gives some Old Testament examples of erring teachers. These examples are not found anywhere else in Scripture, but people who evidently stood opposed to Moses and his God-given authority, those who had stood opposed to truth. And Paul, in our reading today, is going to contrast those examples in our reading with, uh, with Timothy's own example. Uh, let, let's read together. I want to start at verse 10. We'll read down uh, to the end of, of the chapter, as always. I really appreciate you joining me. Look at verse 10. He says, Now you follow my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, perseverance, persecutions, and sufferings, such as happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and, and out of them all the Lord, out of, and out of them all the Lord rescued me. Excuse me. Indeed, verse 12, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But evil men and impostors will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. You, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Paul commends Timothy for his manner of life, for his example, for his teaching. He had followed the apostles' teaching, his conduct, his purpose, his faith, long sufferings, love, patience, and even persecutions and sufferings. You know, Paul was no stranger to persecution. He had endured much. But he reminds Timothy that God had delivered him from all of this in an effort to encourage the young evangelist. And you know Paul must have been so proud. And what a powerful thing it is here. Paul sharing his own experience with Timothy in an effort to, to strengthen him. And I would just say this, well, we need to do this more. Those of us who are older, we need to share our successes. We need to share our struggles. It's so powerful. And those relationships between those who are older and those who, who are younger, those are precious relationships that need um, to be developed. We need to be more intentional, uh, I think. Uh, about that. But you know, Paul must have been so proud to, to, to write this. And, and then he reminds Timothy and all of us, for that matter, in verse 12, he says, indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus, he says, will be persecuted. You know, the example of Paul and Timothy wasn't one of timidity. It wasn't one of, uh, of going along to just get along. They were proclaiming the gospel. They were living as lights in darkness, and they weren't shrinking away and it was worth it to them. They, they lived what Jesus would say in, in reference um, to persecution for his sake in Matthew chapter 5. I want you to look there at verse, look there at verse, I believe it's verse 9. Matthew chapter 5, look there with me at, actually it's verse 10. Look at verse 10. He says, blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. He says, rejoice and be glad. Why? For your reward in heaven is great. Brethren, when we live as lights in darkness, when we oppose error, when we stand for truth, even when we correct in gentleness, as Paul had commended Timothy to do. We can expect persecution, but then that should be our expectation. Persecution should never catch the Christian off guard. And no, as Jesus says here, as Paul reminds Timothy, you're not the first to suffer for Christ. The prophets suffered greatly from truth. Jesus himself, the prime example, he suffered and gave all for us, for the truth. Him being the truth, Paul certainly knew all about these persecutions. So when we suffer for the cause of Christ, no number one, it's worth it. Great, and your reward will be in heaven. But also, number no, number two, that you stand in the greatest of company when we take our stand for Christ. Timothy, you, you continue in these things, Paul says, the things that you've learned, the sacred writings from childhood that give you wisdom, that wisdom ultimately leading to salvation. You know, Timothy, like so many of us, he was blessed from a young age, it seems, with people that loved him enough to teach him. His grandmother, his mother, his father in the faith, Paul, parents and Bible class teachers, we see the example here of instilling truth in our children from an early age. And while they make their choices, as Timothy had to, we can pillow our heads at night 
regardless, knowing we did our part to help them develop in spiritually and spiritually minded, productive kingdom citizens. Brethren, that's the goal with our children. Let's not forget that. Verse 16, as we close, all scripture is inspired by God, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Brethren, the word of God, it's God breathed. It's sufficient to produce in us what God will have us to be. May we treasure it. May we cherish it. May we study it. May we meditate on it. May we live it. And may we teach it. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, for another week in your word, Father, we are so very thankful. Father, we have so much to be thankful for, so many blessings that you shower on us abundantly, day after day after day. Father, we're so thankful for you and all that you do for us. Father, we're mindful of those who are hurting, those who have lost loved ones. Father, we continue to pray for our brother David Bybee and the loss of his friend. May you comfort him, Father, and give him all that he needs. Father, we ask that you would be with our sister Marion. Yes. As she continues to struggle with her health, Father, we ask that you would be with her, that you'd be with Kim and Kathy and Kelly, that you'd be with the entire family, Father, as they care for her. Um, Father, we just ask that, that she would have comfort, that she would have peace, and that you would just bless this, this family, Father, as they care for her. Father, we especially right now want to pray for our sister Jenny, Father. As you know, it's a very difficult time for her. She's going through so much with her health. We're thankful for the progress that she's made, but Father, we just ask you to continue to be with her, continue to bless her and be with Donald and family as they care for her, Father. Father, we pray for all of those who are struggling with cancer. We ask you to be with Savannah, be with Dad, be with Katie, be with Ellie. Father, for all their progress, we're so very thankful. Father, we pray for Christians throughout this world, many of whom are in very difficult and trying situations, Father. We're so blessed to live in a country where we still have the freedom to proclaim your word. Father, we pray if it be your will that that would continue. But Father, we pray for those across this world that maybe don't have that privilege. Give them courage to, to continue to endure, understanding that it is worth it, Father. Father, for your son, for his sacrifice, for your love for us, Father, we are so very thankful. Father, we ask you to be with us today. And as we pray often, Father, we pray for opportunities to do good, to show others you. Bless us in that, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.